It was my 18th birthday. I officially became a young adult with no more being grounded or forced to listen to my parents. I was a free bird in the sky of possibility and exceptionally, with my slender yet athletic body from years and years of being tortured in the public gyms, I would be able to attract some male praise on the way. My parents opened quite a huge party on my birthday, somewhat unusual. I was fairly sure it was a farewell party rather than an event to celebrate my birthday. Clearly, they wanted to get rid of me more than anything else. A typical farewell party, I figured. Few days after my birthday, I asked my parents to help me move. I was prior accepted to the College of Motion Picture Arts at Florida State University thanks to my disturbing horror imagination. The fact that my parents were willing to rent an entire moving van for me without asking for anything else in return was a benefit from owning such peculiar thoughts in my mind. Anyways, I got to Tallahassee in Florida, the state of sunshine, short of any problems. Though, when I arrived, it was more like the state of moonrise since it was nightfall. I looked for my new apartment. Unfortunately, my moving van was still polluting the air somewhere on the highway, so I was stuck with the emptiness in my new apartment. I had to fight back exhaustion to drag myself to a nearby convenience store for some essential basics. When finished buying what I needed, not what I wanted, I realized I didn't have my wallet with me. My first suspicion was that it got mixed in with my junk in the van. Luckily, a stranger was able to cover for me. Only one word to describe him. Handsome, like a movie star. He also offered me a ride home, although I was smart enough to refuse. Even though that's what I wanted. I knew I was going to entice a lot of guys, but I didn't assume it would be this fast. I gave him my number to pay him back later. I didn't get a chance to introduce myself because it was really late and the fatigue demon inside me was making its way to retrieve the throne. Nevertheless, I got into my own car and drove home to call it a night. An annoying loud din of a door being slammed woke me up the next morning. I burst into motion to go out to check thinking it was the moving van. Turned out it was the moving van. However, it was moving my stuff out and leaving instead of moving my stuff into my residence. I started to understand that my strange behaviors were only half the reason that led to my parents' kindness. Back to reality, I was stuck delivering these physical burdens. Coincidentally, the handsome stranger from the other night was jogging nearby. He noticed my struggle, or in another term, spotted an opportunity to ask me out. Immediately, he proposed assistance. Believe it or not, we went out for dinner that night. It was fun. Time went by, I found him very thoughtful, kind, and moreover, he was the only person who didn't freak out by my weird, horrific sense of humor and horrifying stories. We ended up dating for the next few months. Everything was genuinely nice since then. I was doing well with my program at school and enjoying some wonderful time with my new boyfriend afterwards. We usually spent time at each other's places to watch movies on the weekends and, of course, went out for meals constantly because none of us were energetic enough to cook. I actually knew almost every corner of his house, except for one room which was always locked. He said it was his collection room but never opened his mouth about what kind of collection room. I didn't bother asking much despite my enormous curiosity. It wasn't too long before things slowly grew stranger. I started to discover weird objects in his house. First, it was a decent amount of sharp tools like knives and scissors. Then I saw scalpel blades, ear openers, more than two, scattered around his house. Later, the appearance of a flesher in the middle of his house truly struck my sense of normality. Still, I managed to cast them aside from our relationship. On a particular day, we went out for dinner. Naturally, he would take me right to our favorite restaurant, but this time, we stopped at a local craft store. I gotta pick something up, he said. It'll be fast, he continued. Moments later, he came back with a box of wood wool. What do you need this for? I asked. And why do you need so much of it? I stretched out my wondering. I want to extend my collection, he responded. His broad answer somehow settled my interest. Finally, we arrived at the restaurant and started having our feast. During the meal, he emotionally reached out for my hands. I love you, he expressed. I love you too, I responded to his warming thought. I want to show you something really special tonight, he indicated. I smiled with excitement, assuming it was going to be a gift or a splendid surprise. 
After dinner, we went to his house. We marched to the house, but didn't stop once we got in. He proceeded to lead me down the hallway. You ready? He spoke as we ceased in front of his collection room. He opened the door to his secretive lair as well as to my curiosity. Welcome to my collection. A room filled with animals, a dog, a cat, a snake, etc. All were statues, I assumed. Wow, I strangely expressed. I know to other people it would be quite terrifying, but not me as I already owned a peculiar brain. Even so, it was still a little disturbing. Where did you get all of these? They look so lifelike, I said. I started going for a tour around the room. Alive? Yeah, alive, as in breathing and moving, you know, like me and you, he calmly explained. I still remember how old Maximus used to jump on me whenever I got home from school. And how can I forget Lazy Larry always lying down and acting cute to ask for food? He dug up the history of his dog and cat. At this point, his words started to lessen my steps and raise my caution around the room. Oh, sorry to hear that. How did they die? Were there accidents? I asked. There were no accidents. I killed them myself, he announced. I was stopped by revelation in front of an empty stand. I just love them so much that I couldn't bear to let death take them away from me. So I killed them, stuffed them so they could always be with me. I could hear the sharpness of the knife he was picking up behind me. I was saving that for you. He jumped at me and tied me with his powerful grips. I was so horrified that death was the least I could hope for. Tears started pouring out of my eyes as never happened before. A sudden rainstorm in the middle of the desert. I couldn't shout for help for the tears and dread had already occupied my entire body. I couldn't even move. I love you, Kate. Let me make you mine. He began to lift the knife for a formidable finish. I tried extremely hard to escape with the remains of my body. How propitious I was to manage to flee away from his madness. Looking back, I was blessed for having brought that bottle of pepper spray with me. Suffering from the chemical, he struggled around the room and knocked down some of his eternal lovers. Taking advantage, I stole the knife from his hand and landed it on his leg, painfully. His eyes were so distinct at that moment, all I could see was the reflection of me drowning in the pool of blood. He fell, temporarily blinded and disabled. I ran for it as if I was finding the invisible light. Still, his obsessive hollers continued to chase me. Kate! Don't leave me! You can't leave me! Let me save you from death, Kate! Let me save you! I grabbed his car key and locked the door with the hope that that could retain his fanatic soul. I got into his car and drove away without hesitation. I didn't know where I was going, I just wanted to be away from him. At a distance, I stopped to call the police. I had to wrestle with the mental anguish to be able to reclaim my voice. Eventually, the cops came and searched the house. He was nowhere to be found. All they could retrieve were the ruins from our previous battle. An officer came to inform me that he was a patient who escaped from Florida State Hospital. He was diagnosed with multiple personality disorder and was caught for killing all of his family members with one of his many personalities in that very house. I was shocked after what I heard. How a person with such illness like him could have roamed outside for so long and how I could have been slaughtered spending the very first night with him. Along with the horrors, the officer also gave me a small sheet with letters on it. It was a piece of skin pigment with blood written on it. You are mine. By facing the true terror, I was sure that whether he was still alive or dead or captured, he would forever be looking for me, even if my soul departed from this reality. My name is Dasha, and I want to tell you a story about my last boyfriend. We met at university. We accidentally bumped into each other in the hallway. He asked me to go for coffee with him, and I agreed. He told me his name was Norman. We talked about this and that. He was handsome and witty. I was very attracted to him, and before long, we were dating. Norman was a very sensitive and caring guy, not like my previous boyfriends. It was like he was from another planet. He was always interested in what I wanted, always concerned about my needs, but at the same time, he was very masculine. I felt safe with him. Everything was fine at first. It was my friend's birthday, and our whole group gathered in a bar to celebrate. I was excited because I brought Norman, and I wanted to introduce him to everyone. Sitting at the table, we were having fun, 
drinking and laughing. Then some of the guys went outside to smoke, and Norman went with them. They were gone for five minutes, and when they returned, I was approached by my friend Simon. Dasha, I think there's something wrong with this Norman guy, he said. What do you mean? I asked. Well, he's kind of strange. He started talking about his mother, saying really weird things. Then he started giggling like an idiot for no reason. He's not normal. Norman? Not normal? Are you sure? I said. Of course, I spoke with Norman about it, but he denied everything. He said my guy friends were just jealous of our relationship, and they were trying to drive a wedge between us. I believed him, especially since Simon had asked me out on a date one time, and I had to turn him down. It was possible that he just wanted to turn me against Norman and get rid of his competition. But the more time I spent with Norman, the more I started to notice some strange behavior. Sometimes he would get a faraway look in his eyes and go silent for a few minutes. Then he would start talking again as if nothing had happened. And he began to call me mommy. I put up with his little eccentricities because everything else in the relationship was wonderful. And then something happened. It was like a bolt from the blue. One day, he kidnapped me. We were at my house and my parents were out. I went upstairs to get something. All of a sudden, I felt him grab me from behind and he put a handkerchief over my nose and mouth. It was soaked in some kind of chemical and within seconds, I blacked out. When I woke up, I was in some shabby apartment with a dirty rag stuffed in my mouth. My arms and legs were tied to the bed and I had a terrible headache. Norman came in. He put his finger to his lips and pulled the rag from my mouth. I immediately screamed and Norman slapped me across the face really hard. Don't you dare cry, he growled. My mother never cried, okay? He untied my hands and gave me a withering look. He told me if I tried to run away, things would only get worse. Norman took me into the kitchen and sat me down at the table. He put a plate of food in front of me and told me to eat. All this time, he did not take his eyes off me for a second, so I just did as I was told. When I looked into Norman's eyes, I could see he was a complete psycho. How could I have not seen this in him before? He smiled at me as if everything was normal. How were things at work, Mommy? He asked. I had no other choice but to play along with him. All good, I replied. So, we'll go on holiday together next week? Of course, I mumbled. Oh, by the way, someone told me you have a new man in your life, Mommy. That's not true, is it? You wouldn't do that to me, would you, Mommy? I saw how angrily he was staring at me. No, I replied. Well, I knew it wasn't true, he grinned. We don't need anybody else. We're happy together, just me and you. After I finished eating, he took me into the bedroom and forced me onto the bed. He tied my hands, put a gag in my mouth, and left. <laughs> this is how my nightmare began. Sometimes Norman remained with me for a long time, telling me how things were going in college. He always called me mom or mommy. I went along with it because I was afraid of what he might do if I resisted. If I made one mistake, he would beat me terribly. I was stuck in that dingy apartment for six whole days. My room was always locked and there was no clock, so I had to guess what time it was. Norman would come and go. I don't know where he got the money, but he always brought me food and sweets. He said, I love my mother and I want to make her happy. A boy's best friend is his mother. I knew this couldn't go on. My parents and my friends were probably worried sick. I wondered if they had contacted the police already. I wonder if anyone was looking for me. One time, I tried to reason with him. I tried to explain that I was not his mother and he needed to let me go, but he beat me again like crazy. On the sixth day, Norman woke me as usual and told me he was going out to buy us breakfast. I heard the front door close and I started trying to free myself. I felt that I could move my right hand a little. The ropes were not very tight. It took about 20 minutes, but I managed to work it free. I quickly untied myself and rushed to the door, but of course, it was firmly locked. I looked out the window. I was on the fifth floor. 
I grabbed a chair and threw it at the window. With a loud crash, the glass broke and the chair landed on the pavement outside, almost hitting some passerby. Leaning out the window, I screamed at the top of my lungs, Help me! He's going to kill me! Help! He's a psycho! And then I saw him. Norman was standing in the street with a bag in his hand, glaring up at me. By the look in his eyes, I knew the only thing he wanted now was to kill me. People were gathering under the window, so my crazy boyfriend just turned and ran off. Ten minutes later, a police car arrived. The officers broke down the door and rescued me. I will never forget the look in my parents' eyes when they took me home. I spent the rest of the night weeping uncontrollably. It turned out that the police were already looking for Norman. He was on the run from the authorities long before he met me. He was wanted for a double murder. His name wasn't even Norman. It was Ed, and he was actually 30 years old. He had a history of mental illness and had been in and out of insane asylums for most of his life. Two years before, he had been living with his mother. He was completely obsessed with her. His mother was dating a man, and she brought him home with her one night. When Norman caught them together, he flew into a violent rage. He beat both of them to death with a hammer and then just disappeared. I hope the police will find him soon, because until they do, I am too scared to leave my house. If you want my advice, be careful who you date.